hello guys and uh, welcome back to this tutorial where we basically talk about uh, the modeling of the Kinto Moro building uh, as you can see and uh, from the previous videos uh, it's been coming along pretty uh, pretty steadily um, uh, doing everything I can to get it out so now I'm about to get into the video uh, speed lapse of the next part uh, as you can see here all right so what can i say about this um, so as we begin to model um, you know all these details begin to reveal themselves and you begin to wonder uh, you know what exactly what part you should focus on and and whatnot uh, simply because at this point it's a lot easier to use the building itself as a reference point you know in terms of like let's say uh, snapping options because now you can snap at the corner of the building to place different objects and stuff like that and as you can see throughout the building I've been playing around with trying different kinds of beams uh, you know sometimes I use walls sometimes I use structures uh, it really depends uh, but for this project it was very hard to select exactly one workflow uh, because once you model something you find out that you probably wanted to, to have a different control of that object or lose its control and so the approach varied depending on what I was trying to achieve and uh, mind you that so far we're just still trying to get the main shape out you know if there's a necessity to make this building let's say parametrically modifiable then we can look at that option once we are done with the modeling aspect of this you know but for now we want to get the whole uh, model shape out so as you can see here I'm about to try to test a working plane proxy and uh, this is usually how it works uh, you know I try a new tool I test a new tool and then it doesn't work and then you know I'll trust it again another time when my brain is a little bit much refreshed and determined to find out how it works and here I'm uh, positioning all the the, the section planes uh, now it allows me to create different cuts and it also makes the work a little bit easier now let me say that when I generate this uh, section planes um, with the with the draft to you know draft to section uh, op option uh, when if you if you if your object is too heavy and you make modifications let's say in the 3d it's gonna take some time to process and to load and also make changes on the 2d uh, extraction uh, plans that you create so you want to be mindful of those kinds of things when you you're working with this uh, draft uh, extraction things but as you can see in this example it's very practical to just be able to cut out the, the building and uh, just look inside and uh, keep on modeling what the, the features you want and then bring back the building when you need to so I did find it very convenient to so use it in this fashion you know it's a it's a, it's a very different workflow from let's say Revit where you have to literally jump into the floor plan mode. I find that very strange sometimes because you know, uh, you know, th this way of jumping from 3D to 2D space just doesn't appear to be seamless to me. But that's just my preference. Uh, ever since I've started to use Blender and FreeCAD, it seems that modeling in 3D is much more uh, appealing and intuitive. This you know you get to see where things are connecting and not connecting so obviously here I'm placing some of the interior walls um, they seem to be panel boards on top of some type of a uh, thin uh, wall structure or wooden structure of some sort mm -hmm. so I'm about to place the doors as well So in the previous videos when I was trying to place the doors, uh, maybe at one point there was an instance where you know, the door kind of flattened and I think I fi finally figured it out in this video uh, you know, by playing with the offset, some little options like that that you sometimes don't think of uh, but sometimes they are uh, the stuff that make the difference you know. So here in this particular instance I remember to flip the door, we will get there. I mean. It's not exactly this example where you're going to see that, but you'll see that coming up in a little bit. So I want to get all the doors 
and everything, all the walls and everything out first uh, before I can start getting into the other sort of medium to extreme details of the building. I'm going to mention that the next part of this tutorial is uh, a rather short version uh, but I'm not going to be including it here because it's very broken somehow the recording did not work very well so the video is very cheap so if you're looking at it it's gonna lag and lag and lag and so it's not useful so I decided not to post it so um, but I've worked hard to get you more content that video was just about 30 or 40 minutes long and since I promised that I was gonna pro uh, show you the uncut uh, uh, the uncut uh, workflow of all of this process uh, I kind of felt guilty not to show you that video because of its poor unusable quality but uh, I thought that maybe compensating with more good content quality because in, in any case all of this video are extremely lengthy and uh, you can get a, a sense of how things are mo you know how the modeling workflow starts to look like over time as you can see, I'm very uh, particular about checking the details, checking to see the dimensions. And I've noticed that in a lot of cases, or a lot of instances, um, the, the, de the, the doors, for example, were not exactly the same, or, you know, or maybe in the modeling itself, they were not exactly accurate. So some of these things, if you don't check, you will never know, of course. So here I'm trying to work on the second floor. And okay, so this is the part where I was trying to check out the the you know working plane proxy. Now in this example, you know, I was not exactly very successful at making it work. I'm not exactly sure, probably because my computer had not yet updated uh, the changes. Can't exactly tell, but I did test it again after a lot of trials and error, and finally I'm able to make it work. So. In the next tutorials, you probably see me use it much better. The workflow is going to be much more enhanced. It's a it's a tremendously useful tool. I kid you not. Many thanks to you, Yurik, and anybody else who contributed to making it work. So it's a way to replace the traditional way of thinking that you shift from you know the 3D space into the 2D space and stuff like that. Now, exact. You know, again, again, in this tutorial, I didn't. I was not successful, but in the next tutorials, when I get to use it, uh, I'll be much. You know, I'll be much more successful at at using it. <coughs> I remember in this point of the tutorial, I was debating whether I wanted to do uh, the interior walls, which were the future, uh, the future um, installment of uh, the tenants on the building and um, I thought I would do that last uh, in the end it's sort of way that uh, you know I can easily control the different options of visibility like you know as if you were showing a product to a client you show him the different options so I thought well maybe do that last so that um, you know you can you, you can uh, show how the workflow is when you have several options you know when uh, you you have this you know demolition option uh, you want to show to the client and then renew options and stuff like that the line width is different the coloring is different uh, the presentation is different so you want to be able to control all of that and I, I have a feeling that FreeCAD is actually very good at presenting these kinds of different options it's just the spacebar tool you know you just press the spacebar tool and you hide what you don't want to show you know you put it in a folder you hide what you don't want to show you press the spacebar it doesn't show and the, the floor plan is not going to show and that's it and uh, it's very intuitive that way it's simple okay so that's the example about the door where i was talking about where see now i'm rotating the door okay so i'm rotating the door and the door is going to get flat that's because you want to be mindful of uh the normal when you're rotating these things because the sketch thinks in terms of normal it generates something in terms of the normal on which it's drawn I'm not exactly sure I'm explaining that well 
but uh, you get the idea. I hope. Uh, what else? Okay, so you see, the door is flat. Such little tricks like that sometimes that you have to play around to find out. So here, I could not figure it out, right? I could not figure that out. So I got so frustrated because I, I, I just could not understand why I couldn't figure it out. So I just created a new door just to get by very fast. But in the next tutorial, I did figure it out again, finally. So this is how it works. So in the first tutorial, I get to do it and it works and I don't realize how I did it so intuitively on the second tutorial I tried to do it but I'm a bit stuck and I'm not sure what's not working or what I'm missing <laughs> and so on the third tutorial I then recall that probably it may have something to do with the tutorial and it's just a strange way that my mind or my brain did work or maybe how learning works in general and uh, how reinforcement learn uh, you know reinforcing your learning experience works Okay, so here I decided to look at the corrugation, the corrugated panel. This is, you know, uh, one of those times when I decided to use it again. Of course, it's a little bit buggy, but uh, you have to test it. You have to push the program, and I would not hesitate to try to push the program. And so. Here again, I'm testing it. In the past, I've had some experience with it where it would literally generate all this, uh, it would eat up your RAM, your memory. So, this time around, I decided, um, you know, let me try it again uh, to see if there have been some improvements and stuff like that. So, it seems there have been some improvement in terms of the RAM. It doesn't lag your computer completely anymore like it used to, but it's still uh, not exactly perfect but for now it does the job it explains some, you know something it, it, it at least works enough that I can show it but of course it's, it needs a lot of improvement and this is one of those things where I myself am thinking you know that I need to learn programming because I want to be able to um, fix these kinds of issues myself uh, in case it needed to be whenever I come across these small petty issues, you know. So I think that's it.